Good morning. Here we are in our second part of our session, uh, living outside your comfort zone, and, and we'll be in First Kings again. Oh, by the way, I'm Elijah. I just gave Donovan some time off, so I thought I'd fill in and do this for him. In our session last week, we learned that uh, when I went in to deliver that message to Ahab and Jezebel down there, that there was not going to be any rain or dew for some years, and uh, as I uh, abruptly uh, walked out after that, the Lord uh, word came to me and, and told me to take and go in, uh, to this uh, valley and, and uh, hide there and, and stay there for a while. And that he had instructed the ravens to uh, bring me some uh, bread and meat. And the brook that was in there was going to give him the water that I had. So we're going on and, and we're going to learn in serving with trust today. And also on how you can take and help others because of your trust, help others' uh, faith and, and trust grow also. Uh, back in uh, 1859, there was an individual uh, called uh, Blondie that uh, had a cable stretched across the Niagara Falls, and he uh, took and, and would walk across the falls and, and uh, as uh, it thrilled the crowd, he'd done uh, more things. He went across in stilts. He uh, put a gorilla suit on and went across with a wheelbarrow and all. And finally, he come back in and he asked the crowd, you know, uh, hey, uh, who would like to ride on my back as we cross the falls? Well, they knew that he could do it, but nobody wanted to take and step out and get up on his back. His manager did, and so the, they walked across and all. So in this, we're going to learn to take and, and uh, trust, and we will see how, how I demonstrated that uh, God can be trusted in all things. Our setting that we're having, I've been at this brook for some time now, and, and uh, the ravens have been very faithful in, in bringing uh, bread and meat to me uh, in the morning and the evening hours. And the Lord has completely taken care of me. And, and during this time, uh, it gave me some time to reflect on the things that the Lord has uh, possibly prepared me for. Let's look at uh, down there in 1 Kings uh, chapter 17, verses 7 through 12. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, go at once to Zephathiah in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a uh, widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zephathai. When he came to the town gate, a widow was gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called and bring me please a piece of bread. As surely as your Lord, your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in the jug. And I'm gathering a few sticks so that I may make uh, a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Well, when the word came to me, that morning the brook finally dried up. I got my last drink of water out of it and, and the Lord uh, told me to take and, and go. And, and to go to this Phoenician city, it was 100 miles across the desert that I had to go. Well, I, and then uh, with the Lord telling me that uh, he had a widow woman that was going to take care of me there, well, I knew uh, that the ravens done uh, good there, and so I knew that the Lord had prepared in advance the things for me that when I did get to the city that I'd be taken care of. However, uh, thinking about it being a, a widow woman and in this region, uh, she was probably uh, destitute and I would have never thought about someone uh, in that condition to be able to take and, and carry out and uh, provide everything I needed. But I trusted in the Lord in this, and, and so away I went. Well, after crossing the desert and coming up the gates of the city, I was pretty hot, tired, thirsty, hungry. And lo and behold, here's this widow woman. She is out gathering some sticks up in uh, front of the gate and, and around the area there. And, and uh, I uh, called out to her and says, uh, 
could you bring me a, a drink of water in a, a jar? Well, she stopped what she was doing, and, and she turned and started off to go get some water. And I thought, well, while she's going out to water, I said, uh, how about, uh, could you bring me a piece of bread, please? Well, she took and turned, and she said, you know, by the Lord your God, says, uh, I don't have any bread, says, uh, I was fixing to make a, a, a these sticks, make a, a small fire and, and bake the last bit of flour I had and, and oil for my son and I so that we can eat it and die. And so uh, I told her, I said, you know, the Lord God will provide, but first go and do as you say, but bring that first loaf and everything to me. In this, we see that Elijah was uh, out to prove that Yahweh was the Lord God. He was one true God. And the things that I had declared the Lord had done in the land, it was uh, pretty dry. And the things that the Lord had me to do, you know, it's, it's not uh, a normal uh, request. And so it's really outside of my comfort zone and the things I had done before but I trusted the Lord to take and provide everything I needed and, and go uh, where I was at. Of course, while I was in that ravine, they did look for me. Oh, they wanted to get a hold of my hide. But uh, I was able to stay in that area and, and was well hidden. The Lord had taken real good care of me there. And when you sit down, uh, what helps you trust God's guidance uh, when it just doesn't seem to make sense? Sometimes we question the Lord, and sometimes uh, we hear of some, you know, put kind of a fleece out before the Lord to see, is this really what you want me to do or not, and all. But he does take care of us, and sometimes the things he asks us to do causes us to really to step out in faith to be able to do these things so that the glory of God can be manifested. In our... Next session here, we see that uh, God's directions, even when it doesn't make sense, we can also encourage others to join with us and all. And in the scripture verse, 1 Kings 17, 13 through 14, I said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. In recapping, in here, when our routines are in upheaval and our provisions is in question, uh, we have a new opportunity to trust God and to lead others to also trust Him too. And that's what I was doing in this situation. The widow, she didn't have anything more than what she had left at the house. I didn't have anything with me at all because I was traveling light. And uh, as soon as the Lord told me to go, and, and I did, and, and uh, so here I am. But I have the, the assurance that God is going to provide as he has said he would, just as he did at the brook and all. And, you know, when... I told the, the widow woman, you know, go home, do as you said, and, and bake that loaf of bread, but make a small one and bring it to me first. And, you know, she may have had some reservations about that and all, thinking about, you know, well, if I take and make him this loaf of bread, then we won't have anything for my son and I uh, left out of it very much, and, and that's going to be the end of it. But she took and, and she obeyed what I told her to do. And we can see a good example of this, you know, in, in uh, Numbers uh, 15, uh, verses 20 and 21. It says, you know, present a uh, loaf from the first of your grain meals. Uh, come and give this offering to the Lord from the first of your ground meal. So she presented it really as an offering to my Lord God in this. She didn't realize it at the time, but as time went on, I'd be able to share with her how my faith has grown in our Lord and, and how he will take care of her also in this. So she did as I said, and as she went back each day to her 
a jar of flour and, and a jug of oil, it was uh, enough to make another meal for the day. And I can just imagine what the neighbors were thinking down there. They was kind of short on these supplies too. They could smell fresh bread coming from this uh, widow's uh, house each and every day. But the Lord, he was good and, and took care of us and all. Also, this region, it's right in the middle of this uh, worship the ball. And it's also Jezebel's home area. Her uh, dad is king in, in Sidon. And uh, so the Lord has brought me right into the middle of people that are worshiping Baal. We also uh, know that um, they considered Baal as the one of fertility and that he uh, would make the rains and the grain would grow and the olive trees would grow so that they had olive oil. Well, none of that happened and everything that their priests tried to do uh, didn't uh, make any changes at all. And each and every day, the people had less and less to take and, and use from. So when you look at my actions down here, we can compare those to Jesus. You know, when he instructed the disciples, he said, take and feed them. And there was 5,000 people in, in that situation. And they responded, you know, Lord, we only have uh, five loaves and a couple of fish. But he told them to go ahead and do it. And he took that, blessed it, and multiplied it, and was able to feed everybody there. Just as I predicted in the drought, I prophesied continued provisions for the widow, and it had happened. And with my ear tuned to the voice of God, I spoke aloud with confidence what God had impressed on me in secret. His example serves as a model for us, and we can hold fast to faith when, we, when all seems lost. We will share our faith and invite others to trust with us uh, in the God who never forsakes us. What provisions of God in the past have encouraged you to trust in him in the present? I know uh, after uh, the Navy base out here closed up, uh, things was kind of slim for a while, and, and uh, the uh, pastor that was uh, filling in while the church was looking for a pastor uh, came to the house right at dinner time, and, and we had just enough set down to uh, feed us uh, down there before our payday was the next day. And, and Jane, she says, uh, what are we gonna do? And I says, we're gonna do just like Jesus did. Prayed over it and everybody was fed and everybody was happy and all. In our next verse, we're gonna see how we can trust God for his gu uh, guidance. In uh, 1 Kings 17 verses 15 through 16, she went away and did as Elijah had told her, so there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. In this, we see that the Lord God was very faithful, and as she seen this miracle happening each and every day, she became to take and, and know and uh, the Lord God that I served, and that it, uh, the God I serve was the true living God. We also know, too, that each day we had to go back for another blessing of faith. And with it, it God uh, promises it comes with a condition. We must seek him first, seek his kingdom first, in Matthew 6:33. We must revere him in Psalms 34, 9, and walk with integrity in Psalms 84, 11. God takes upon himself to meet our needs in return. We see God to work when we trust in him. So it's not something we do one time now and, and uh, then later when we're in need again, come back to the Lord, but we must seek the Lord each and every day. That's why it's so important as you read your Bible and go back over even passages that you read before. You can find things that you didn't know and understand before as the Holy Spirit takes and, and shows and enlightens you to the new things that he set out. In this, we also see that uh, we can trust God based on how 
God worked in biblical times. As we look back through the scriptures, both old and new, we can see the things that he has done. Plus, we can talk to those that's within our church now today, that, that the things that God has done for them and all. In our willingness to trust God and act in faith gives him the opportunity to display his power, not our own. George Muller, in the 19th century uh, Bristol, England area, took and decided that he wanted to take and prove to his brothers that God could supply everything. And he was instrumental in starting uh, homes for uh, uh, children that didn't have a home. And everything that they had in his autobiography that he had written about, God provided their, their food, uh, their shelter, uh, their clothing, their education, everything in this and all. And people was amazed to see how God had worked during that time. We can also help others come along and, and uh, by what God has done for us and share our faith. You know, the, that bread that the widow woman made every day and all, when you look back at the Israelites when they was in the wilderness and the Lord was feeding them with manna, when it was prepared and cooked, it tastes like something that was cooked with olive oil. In 2 Corinthians 9, 10, we see, He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store and seed and enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. So we know that in these words that we can take and rely on what the Lord has done. Also in Psalms 37, 19, it is promised to those that trust in God that they shall not be ashamed in, their, in this evil time, but in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Well, he took care of me and took care of the widow woman and all. And so I'm just uh, waiting with anticipation to see what uh, the Lord God wants for me to do because when he told me to meet up with this widow woman down there, he took and, and told us that uh, I was to stay there for a time. And that's exactly what I was going to take and, and do, is uh, stay until the Lord give me his word again. And if you uh, sometimes hesitant, take and, and pray and ask the Lord to take and help you and give you the word and the direction that you need to go. In living it out, trust, identify one thing God has told you to do that doesn't seem logical. Do it anyway. Encourage. Name someone that's struggling with a crisis. Share with this person your hope in Christ. Tell him or her how God has brought you through troubles and pray with that person. Give. Give an outrageous grit to the church or someone in need. Trust God to replenish it and what you have. So as we've gone through, we learned in our first session that you can trust God to provide your basic needs that you need. In our session that we're finishing today, we can trust God and what he has done for not only you, but also for those around you and taking care of the needs of everyone and all. As we go through this, take and, and think about what these two uh, chapters and uh, reference verses has given and think about the times that you felt uncomfortable with the Lord had you outside your comfort zone and ask the Lord to take and, and help you to be sensitive to his word as he uh, gives it to you so that you'll know the area and the direction that he would have you to go. And then don't be hesitant, but take and, and move because as you start out and moving, your faith starts in the process of going also. All right, take and, and look to see you the next time. Let's, let us pray before we go. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this day that you have given. We thank you, Lord God, for all the many blessings that you have given us, those that we see visibly with our eyes and those that we don't realize until we sit back and, and think about it later and say, oh, the Lord provided that for me and I didn't even realize it at the time. Father, I pray that each one that is watching here today that you will bless them. Bless them, Father, with good health. 
Help them, Father, to be able to reach out and to share with others the things that you have shown them. Father, and we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.